Much to the dismay of many a science fiction writer, our reality is bounded by the fundamental principles of physics. Chief among these is perhaps the law of the conservation of energy. Not to put too fine a point on it, it means that in order to do work with anything, like our vehicles, we first need to, to supply that system with some sort of energy. There's no perpetual motion machines for us. Sorry guys, physics. It's the law. At least in every fundamental way that affects us here right now, on this little blue marble that's hurtling through space. For internal combustion engine, or ice vehicles, this means filling them up with some kind of liquid fuel. And for electric vehicles, we've come to expect that this means charging them with electricity from a charging station. But what if there was another way to get electricity into your EV? Well, there is. Wireless charging. Wireless charging, sometimes referred to by its more scientifically correct name, inductive charging, is a method of charging electrical devices by utilising the principles of magnetic fields. Yeah, magnetic fields. Or to be 100% technically correct, electromagnetic fields caused by electromagnetic induction. This in turn means, just like some modern smartphones and gadgets, that you could charge your car without any physical wires or contact between your car and the charging station. Or maybe even charge your car as you're driving along the road. Today I'm going to delve into the science behind this, and since most of us haven't had a car with inductive charging, I did actually have inductive charging on my Nissan LEAF, you can see a video on it here, we're going to spend a little time looking at how all of this works, examine just one of the companies leading the push towards wireless charging, and then ponder where it might end up in the future. Now, without any further ado, let's get started. I'm not a physics major, I'm a music major, but I think between our writer Morgan, who was an engineering student, and my high school physics class, we can give you a 101 introduction into the basics of how wireless charging works. Let's keep it simple to begin with. Wireless charging works by taking advantage of electromagnetic induction. In an inductive charging setup, you have essentially a transmitter and you have a receiver. The transmitter is usually inside of some kind of wireless charging transmitter pad, while the receiver is usually inside the device being charged. Although they have different roles, the transmitter and the receiver are largely the same construction-wise. Remember that, we're coming back to it. The primary component of both the receiver and the transmitter is a wire coil that resides inside of them. When the alternating current is fed through the coil in the transmitter module, this induces or creates an alternating magnetic field which emanates from the transmitter coil. The magnetic field then interacts with the coil in the receiver and induces an electrical current to flow through the circuit attached to it. Simply put, any time a coil of wire is placed in a changing magnetic field, a current will be induced through the coil. This is, by the way, the same principle that's used to make an electric motor turn, but let's not get sidetracked at this point. The current that's induced in that secondary coil can then be used to provide power to whatever it's attached to, in this case a car's onboard charging circuits, which of course then provide power to the battery. That in a nutshell, in a very basic way, is how inductive charging works. But if you're someone who wants a little more nuance, then well, stick around, let's go there. To truly understand wireless charging, you must first understand Faraday's law of induction, it gives the mathematical explanations for how wireless charging systems actually work. But don't worry, we're not going to go into the maths here. But what we are going to do is have a quick look at a conceptual level of how this law works. As I previously mentioned, alternating current will be passed through the transmitting coil, which will generate a changing magnetic field. Due to the fact that the current is an alternating one, the magnetic field will change over time. This alternating magnetic field generated by the alternating current in the transmitter will cause a magnetic flux within the area of the receiving coil to change too. It's this changing magnetic flux passing through the loop of the receiver coil that causes current to flow through the receiver. This happens because the changing magnetic flux generated by AC current running through the transmitter coil will induce an electromotive force in the receiver coil. The electromotive force is technically not a force in any traditional sense, but in this case we can think of it as an electric potential. And we can think of it almost as a voltage. This induced EMF will cause an AC current to begin flowing through the receiver coil. 
and vehicles and other electronic devices, of course, except current in direct current. So a current rectification circuit is needed to convert that AC into DC. And the rectification circuit is just like any other rectifier in any mains powered device that needs to turn alternating current into direct current. A similar device, in that case called an inverter, can be placed into the transmitter to ensure that the current flowing into the transmitter is in an alternating current form. This is especially necessary if the transmitter is accepting a DC power input. This is what happens in the case of USB charging pads for mobile phones. The incoming DC current is converted to a specific alternating frequency in the transmitter before it's then converted back into DC in the receiver. This raises an interesting point because the components in the receiver are almost the same as those in the transmitter, which means some wireless charging systems can transfer current in both directions. And you know what that means, the potential in the future for not only wireless charging of vehicles, but also wireless transfer of power from car back to your home or the electrical grid. And of course, because the technology works using magnetic fields and there's no physical connections, it can continue to run through snow, rain and ice, no risk of electrocution. And it can also run when you're driving down the road. One of the companies working to bring wireless charging to the electric vehicle world is Wetricity. It's a US company that acquired the Qualcomm Halo wireless charging technology several years ago and has been refining that along with its own technology for use with EVs. It says its technology is more efficient than previous generation wireless charging tech. And let me tell you, based on my past experiences of the plugless power charging system we have, or we used to have on our Nissan Leaf, Efficiency can make the difference between a fun charging experience and a garage that gets uncomfortably toasty warm in the winter due to the massive losses of the wireless charging system. Another issue, by the way, that we had with our plugless power system was that the car and the charging pad had to be paired, which means you could only realistically charge when you were in one location. Luckily, though, that's been solved, I understand, by more modern, capable solutions. Wetricity's system, further refined from the Qualcomm Halo days, uses the principles of resonance to push for higher efficiencies and lower energy losses, and a larger physical separation between the charging pad and the receiver. And it works by setting the transmitter and receiving coils resonant frequencies to be the same. It claims its electric vehicle charging system is capable of transmitting power at up to 93% efficiency between the wall outlet and the vehicle's battery pack at level two charging speeds of between 3.6 and 11 kilowatts. It also claims that its technology could be embedded under a layer of tarmac or concrete. We think that this could make the technology more viable in commercial settings, but it's not the only company to do this. I've also seen dynamic charging systems embedded in concrete. The technology that Wetricity has also claims V2G capabilities, and Honda has partnered with the company in the past to bring that to market. But Wetricity, as you've probably guessed, isn't the only company doing this. Many tier one part suppliers, that's companies that provide components to mainstream automakers, are working on their own takes on resonant tuned inductive charging systems. Universities and other organizations are examining dynamic charging. And of course, several standards have been laid out by organizations like the SAE that dictate how wireless charging systems should operate. Some automakers like BMW even offer wireless charging on their cars in some markets as optional extras. Now that you know what wireless charging is and who's working on it, there's one question left. What hole in the market does this technology serve on paper? Wetricity and many other wireless charging technology providers do seem to have an impressive technology. And we hope that wireless charging does have a future in the EV world in that niche market where conventional plug-in charging stations don't work, such as offering charging options for those who don't have access to a private garage or an off-street parking space. And that's good because the real problem that wireless charging solves isn't to do with convenience, it's to do with eliminating charging stations and cables in the public. When it comes to home charging, plugging in is not a hassle. It can take maybe five or 10 extra seconds to unplug or plug in your vehicle, and it will always be more efficient than wireless charging. Frankly, I'm not sure that people are gonna pay for this technology. 
And to be really clear with you, I don't think this technology is a worthwhile upgrade for most people at home because it doesn't offer much other than convenience. But outside of the home and in the autonomous vehicle world, well, it's different. Any EV owner knows that charging up your car at a public charging station can be a bit of a headache. Users can run into problems with public chargers that just aren't working the way you want them to. They might not be on the same network. They might have difficulty paying or authenticating you. And very often you'll end up on the phone with a representative from the company that you're trying to work with that doesn't understand why your car is not talking to the charging station. And wireless charging, if implemented correctly, could actually get rid of some of those problems. Large corporations like supermarkets and big box retailers could conceivably install wireless charging pads in several of their parking spaces. You'd mark them up just like any other charging station with paint on the ground and various visible signage that tell EV owners where they can park. When an owner pulls into that space, their vehicle would automatically begin receiving energy from the charging station and their bill could be automatically debited from their bank account. But in the future, this is where it gets really interesting, because autonomous cars that drop you off at the entrance to the store and then go and find a place to charge could really benefit from wireless charging systems. It would eliminate the question of who plugs the car in when it parks up. This does mean that we're never going to see Tesla's robotic snake charger come to market. But in those situations, wireless charging does have a real use case scenario that goes beyond it's cool. But like all charging technologies today, if the authentication setup isn't seamless and the payment system isn't quick and easy, well, then it's just another complex form of complex public charging. And frankly, the biggest challenge right now is to get charging providers to get the basics of physical charging right. Most aren't wired or wireless. We need a better system of paying for the fuel we use. Wireless technology might have a place in the future for on-street and autonomous vehicle charging, but before we embrace this wireless future, we need to fix the problems plaguing our current system. Pushing ahead with the new shiny tech will not fix anything unless we master the basics. After all, getting people plugging in and giving them a place to plug in is so much more important than a wireless charging system. And that's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month Patreons. That's John Lyons, Raging Fellows, Jeffrey Songster, and Tesla in the gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters. That's Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Sean Ueda, Will Graylin, and Ian. You can join all of these amazing people by becoming a Patreon supporter yourself by following the link below. You'll also find a link below if you'd prefer to send us a donation through Ko-fi or Bitcoin. There's also a free link to our free Discord server, which is totally free to join. So sign up and join in the fun. And if you want some swag, well, you'll also find a link to our Redbubble store. After the names have finished scrolling, you'll see a suggestion for a new video to watch. So please consider watching it if you haven't, and I'll be back very soon. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!